Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. Gervonta Tank Davis knocks out Ryan Garcia in the seventh round. And what was an interesting fight to watch. So, going into this fight, my pick, as I said before, was Tank Davis to win. Probably on points, but knockout as well was a real possibility. Now, I felt that when this fight was announced first, that it was going to be a Tank Davis win. The closer we got to it, the more I started kind of thinking, hmm, Garcia does have a lot of good attributes there that could offset Tank Davis. They definitely could. But I just think Tank Davis is going to... The activity, which he had, because he obviously he fought there early January, and the fact that this is the biggest fight of his career, you know, Ryan Garcia is definitely the best he's fought, we're going to see the best of Tank Davis. We're going to see the Tank Davis, who we should have seen consistently throughout his career from 2017 onwards. We're going to see him in this fight. Now, I thought we'd see the best Ryan Garcia as well, but I felt that both at their best, Tank Davis still wins. Now, this fight, the first round went pretty much as I thought it would because Davis is not normally the quickest starter. And Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia is explosive, he's fast, but he knows himself. He knew himself going into this fight. Tank Davis is probably the biggest punter he's been in there in the ring with. So, neither guy really took the initiative in the first round. They both were very, very cautious. Neither guy landed any power shots. And Tank Davis's punch output was very low. I mean, it was next to nothing in the first round. Ryan Garcia was the busier, so just off the base of that, you'd have to give the first round to Ryan Garcia. He did some good work. But the problem was, right, it was Garcia's problem throughout the fight. You're in there with a southpaw. You're trying to land the left hook. Now, some people will tell you that the left hook is a good point to try and land against a southpaw. I disagree. I think the right hand is the main shot to land because, put it like this, your jabbing hand is pretty much taken away by the southpaw. And... You could lead with the left hook, but more often than not, the right hand is the punch to try and throw against the southpaw. Tank Davis was onto the left hook from Ryan Garcia from the get-go. So, the left hook just wasn't working. It wasn't working for Ryan Garcia. When he did try throw the right, that's when he had a little bit more success. You know, you'll see it in the sixth round when he started letting the right hand go. It was another round he won. That that was the punch that when he was getting through on Tank Davis, he wasn't stunning Tank Davis that much. I mean, maybe a few times Tank Davis's legs maybe just, you know, did a little, I don't want to say dance, but maybe they got stiff because, you know, they felt the power because Garcia can definitely crack. But once he was throwing that shot, he was having more success. The second round, he started the second round very fast at Ryan Garcia. And Tank Davis just ended up getting into a clinch. I wouldn't necessarily say he was hurt per se. But Garcia started fast, but what did he do? He made a mistake that I knew he'd make at some point in this fight. He started getting into an exchange, getting into a dust-up, no defense, chin way up in the air, walked into a left hand. Left hand thrown by Tank Davis, down goes Ryan Garcia. Now, he was able to recover from that quite well. Showed good recovery skill, or good recovery powers, I should say, in that second round. Yeah, it wasn't a devastating, big, you know, huge left hand like the one he landed on Roley, but it was still a good shot, and he caught... Um, Ryan Garcia in the middle of an exchange so for Ryan it was a case of I'm on top boom what's happened I'm on the floor so he's able to recover from that got through the second round and from that point on from the third the fourth and the fifth round Tank Davis took a foothold in this fight you know he really started you know letting the big shots go Garcia was looking to land the left hook but it wasn't coming at all he was having no success with it so those three rounds it was an easy fight to score you know, I'd be very surprised if this wasn't a four rounds to two type fight on all the scorecards. The first round and the sixth round, you give them to Ryan Garcia. And the third, fourth and the fifth and obviously the second, you give to Tank Davis. Because that was literally how this fight went. I mean, I haven't seen the scorecards yet that the judges have, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't the same. Because that's really how it, it was an easy fight to score. That's how this fight was. Garcia, first round. Garcia, sixth round. And the rest were Tank Davis. So that's how it was going into the sixth round. Now, in the seventh round, in interestingly, Garcia had a good sixth round. And he tried to build on that in the seventh round. So he was actually getting the better, I felt, of the seventh round. Until again, of course, another little exchange. It was a very quick body shot that went in. I actually, looking at it originally, was like, did he land a headshot? That I that maybe was just a very quick glancing headshot that just discombobulated Garcia because his nose was bleeding. And I was thinking, did a shot go in there to the face that I that was just maybe a glancing shot or maybe it was a because I was kind of looking. Then when I look back at the replay, you were like, oh yeah, body shot. Now body shots, 
as many will know, they are sickeners. They really are. And you can get delayed reactions to them. You know, you can. I mean, a good example would be, you know, well, that wasn't a delayed reaction, but Hopkins, when he fought De La Hoya, body shot crippled him. Uh, Liam Smith had a think of the late reaction in the eighth round when Canelo hit him with a body shot. There's always examples of it, and this was Garcia again. Went down. Now, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, because he did look in pain, and you often see the fight was grimace, but I wonder could he have got because he was this much I think of getting up. This much I think of getting up at the count of ten. He didn't. Ten was counted, referee waved it off, Tank Davis moves on. Now credit to Garcia. He did say in the post fight that the, de- the rehydration clause, what they should call it a dehydration clause, it wasn't ideal, but he's not going to use that as an excuse for not winning this fight. And you know what? A lot of fighters, and you see it's so common, right? A fighter just li- just gets out boxed or gets stopped and just looks bad, loses. Oh, it's the weight. Oh, it's always the weight. They always It's like the weight is always the excuse. And then they move up to the next weight when clearly they weren't struggling at the weight below and then they're like uh oh made a cock up here Garcia didn't use that as an excuse it was just like Tank Davis was the better man on the night and he was he was the better man on the night he was the better fighter of the two he's winning the fight Um, so they move on obviously Tank Davis Tank Davis is going to stick around I reckon at 135 although he didn't look amazing on the scales I have to say even at 136 didn't look amazing so I wonder how many fights he has at 135. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes to 140. And I think Rowley is fighting Ishmael Barossa for the WBA 140-pound title. Wouldn't shock me if Tank Davis and Rowley go and replay it again and Tank Davis decides to start campaigning at 140. The reason being is that win or lose for Devin Haney against Vasily Lomachenko, probably win, I reckon he's going to 140 next fight. So, there you go. I mean, Devin Haney, Tank Davis. I'd like to see that fight. Personally, I reckon Tank Davis does him. I reckon Shakur Stevens does Devin Haney. I reckon a prime Lomachenko does Devin Haney. So, I re- like, people look at Devin Haney and say, like, look how good he was against Cambosis. It's like, yeah, I wasn't surprised. I picked them both times because I knew Cambosis would have absolutely nothing to be able to offset Devin Haney with. You know, you look at guys like... You know, your Shakur Stevenses. You look at guys like your Tank Davises. You're thinking, no, you're not going to have an easy time against those guys. I'd be picking Devin Haney. Or, sorry, I'd be picking Tank Davis to beat Devin Haney. At 140. At 140, certainly. So, let's see. Let's see. For now, I'll leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed the video, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. What I'll do is I'll get review of the week recorded early tonight because I'm doing some stuff with my mate this evening. And uh, we'll pre- premiere it at about 8 o'clock. I'll go through... All the fights that were on over the weekend, the Sky cards and the, the Zone card, which was on last night as well. So, for now, I'll leave you with that, people. Smash the like button on the way out. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Peace.